you may have heard of an acoustic phenomenon called sympathetic resonance. Now, what is this? Now, in short, it's something that helps the piano to sound more beautiful. Now, it's not something that piano makers can actually design and build into the instrument. It's just a natural property of acoustics. So when a certain string is vibrating, a certain string has a certain frequency, then other compatible strings will vibrate in sympathy. So that's, in effect, what sympathetic resonance is. Now, that sounds kind of abstract, so let me explain at the piano. If I play a note, let's say C, then this G is actually vibrating in sympathy. And the reason for that is that they share an overtone. So without going into detail uh, into the overtone series, let me just say that if you play this C, the first overtone is an octave higher, then there's one a fifth higher than that, and this is actually an overtone of this G as well. Let me show you. So if I play this G, the first oct uh, overtone is one octave higher, it's this G, then a fifth higher, and then a fourth higher than that, and then it's this G. So this is a common overtone of these two notes. So that means that when we, when we play this C, we're also hearing some G in there. Now, that assumes that the damper is not uh, on the, the G string. So when we play this note, then the damper on the piano lifts up so that the strings can vibrate. But as soon as we let go, then the damper falls onto the string, and then it stops vibrating. So that means it stops the sound. So we can actually demonstrate this in a way that's, that's very concrete. So it's, it's very interesting. So let's, let's have a listen. What happens if I play this C silently? So notice that I press the key and I'm holding it. When I'm holding this, this key down, what this means is that the dampers are actually raised for this particular note. Uh, and if I play a note for which the C is an overtone, then we will hear the C. So let me try something. Now, for this G, it's not an overtone, but we'll still hear uh, maybe kind of a little something. Um, but if I play this C, this C is the first overtone of this. And notice how we could hear this C pretty clearly. So let me try again. I'll play a low C. And I could play them as an octave. And notice you could hear this pretty clearly. Now, if I do this again, and let's say I play a key for which the C is not an overtone, so an incompatible uh, string, the, let's say, for example, this, this B then you don't really hear anything, maybe a little bit of dirt, a little, a little bit of noise. Now, we can also do this for entire chords. So what if I hold a C major triad silently, so we didn't hear anything, but if I play, let's say I play this B, and I don't believe any of these notes is an overtone of the B. Yeah, so we don't really hear anything. But if I do this and if I play, let's say, these two C's, then we're going to hear the C major chord. Listen very carefully. And in particular, we hear the C and the G. So this is a pretty interesting phenomenon. Now, we can also take advantage of what's called the so sostenuto pedal. That's the middle pedal on most grand pianos, or on grand pianos made today. And so I'll press this silently, and now I'm going to press this third, I'm sorry, the second pedal, this middle pedal, and what that does is act as a kind of ghost hand. So if I play, we already hear the chord because it's, th these are overtones of these two notes, or actually these three notes in particular, but if I play these notes, It's as if I'm actually holding them down with my fingers. So I'm just 
So I play them silently, and then I'm now I press the middle pedal, the sostenuto pedal, and it acts as if I'm holding these notes down with my fingers. But, but, but not for anything else, not for any other keys. So we can use this phenomenon to demonstrate the sympathetic resonance here. So I'm holding down C major and let me play a bunch of keys below here. And you could hear, and as soon as I let go of the middle pedal, then the sound stops. So that, in essence, is what sympathetic resonance is. Now, there's another expressive possibility at the piano with regard to sympathetic resonance. We're not limited to the middle pedal, the sostenuto pedal. We can also use the sustain pedal. And this is pretty interesting, actually. And now, admittedly, what I'm about to show you is a subtle effect, but it's very expressive. And, and if you listen carefully, you'll definitely notice the difference. Now, if I play a note, let's say I play C, and I'm not using the pedal, but now I press the right pedal, the sustain pedal. Now that C continues, but if I play any other note, as you know, that's what the sustain pedal does. It lifts all of the dampers on the piano. So listen to this sound. I'm gonna play the C, and then I'm going to press the right pedal. And now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to press the right pedal. So I'm raising the dampers. And now I'm going to press C. And listen to the difference. Do you hear how much more resonant that sound is? So I'll show you the difference once again. So first I play the C, and then I press the pedal. And now I'll press the pedal and then play the C. What this latter option does, first pressing the pedal and then playing the note, is it allows you to hear all the, of the other strings that are compatible in terms of the overtones, length of strings, and whatever. It's actually more, com more complicated than that. I won't get into the, the physics of strings and the vibrating strings and their frequencies. It actually depends on several different factors, right? One is length, another is thickness, and, and the third is tautness. But, but in any case, the notes that are compatible will vibrate in sympathy when we press the sustain pedal. So that's what it allows us to do. So this is a relatively subtle effect, but I think it is an important one. Uh, and I encourage you to add it to your expressive vocabulary. It doesn't work unless there's a pause or if you're at the very beginning of a piece. If you're simply changing the right pedal, then this effect really uh, won't work because you have to change the pedal just after you play the new note or the new harmony. So those are a couple of demonstrations of sympathetic resonance at the piano. And there are a couple practical, expressive tools that you should add to your toolkit. Hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.